I'm here with Holly. I'm so excited. Hi. <gasps> cheeseburgers. Trisha has never had a cheeseburger. <laughs> I'm so weirded out by that. I'm so excited. Well, for, I went to your TikTok because I uh -huh. wanted to see what you ate because I, I remember you ordering it when you were sick. Yeah. So I wanted to see what you ate. I knew you got a cheeseburger with no onion. So I'm excited to try it. So we got extra cheeseburgers. I'm so curious to see if you'll like it because I love a McDonald's cheeseburger, but I feel like it's kind of an acquired taste because I worked there in high school. Like it's not like a Shake Shack or an In-N-Out. Like right. it's not really that quality. quality but I just, love it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh yeah, it looks like a little grilled cheese or something. Let's see. Mm. So good. Oh, it's actually good. I didn't okay. even know what to expect. Glad you like it. Because I've tried the Big Macs and I like the meat, like the patty. And this does taste like a grilled cheese. I'm surprised it's still not pickles because you love pickles. They put like one or two pickles on it. Yeah, I was really trying to calm my nerves. Like I almost was like not going to even come because I was just so scared. No. Because you're so, I mean, we talked on social media and you uh -huh. know, like I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. And it's just like so surreal to me. Like, you know, when you see people on like TV and you're just like, there's just no way I'd ever, like to me, it's like Pamela. Yeah. Like, I'll never meet her. Mm -hmm. That's how you were. So this is so surreal. I'm so excited. I'm excited to be here. It's so fun. <laughs> Thanks for taking me to McDonald's. Oh my God. I am. I, my favorite cheat day foods. I love it. I love that you went. You got the pies. You got the fries. Oh, and a, and a really old fish. It's definitely my cheat meal. I usually have like one cheat meal a week. Mm -hmm. And I love it when it's McDonald's turn. Oh, it's so good. I love it. It's, it's just, just so comforting. Good. And you know what else? I don't know why, but sometimes when I'm sick, if you have like that random nauseous feeling, McDonald's is the only thing that will cure that kind of sickness for me. Like yeah. I'll have to Postmate it and get like a Sprite and like all the things. Oh, I love that you have Sprite with it. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like the equivalent of 7 Up to like soothe your yeah. stomach. <laughs> mm -hmm. But today we got Diet Cokes, which... I was super excited because I love the taste of Diet Coke. Though. Me too. Like it's once you so get good. used to Diet Coke, Diet Coke is like its own art. Ugh. It's so good. It like burns your throat in a different way that like Coke doesn't. It's yeah. Amazing. And I love, okay. I also love that we're matching today. Wearing our figment sweater. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I, okay. Does it weird you out when people like want to like dress like you? Or do you think it's like cool? You're like, that's what no, I, I do. So, I'm so flattered. Like, okay. It doesn't occur to me that anybody would ever want to dress like me. I think it's so cute. I bought the entire outfit. Like, I don't even know if you know, I have like my Nikes on. Oh, I cute. have the purple skirt, but I don't really have like a style. So I was like, copy people. Well, no, style. what your style is, is every day you have a cosplay, which is <laughs> right. what I love. And it brings me so much joy on your TikTok. I'm like, what is she going to do today? Have you ever done a Taylor Swift cosplay? No, but I feel like I should. Because... I feel like you need to. And I feel like yeah. now that she's doing the Eras tour and has all these iconic costumes on the tour, it's the perfect time for you to get into like, Taylor Swift. Where do I start? Because I feel like she's just been around for so long. I never. She has. Oh, God. Where do you start? Are you a Swiftie? I am. I really got into reputation and I've just been into her ever since. Oh, have you met her? No. Actually, I did once, but it was at like some industry, like record, like um, music executive party. And she was really nice and had my daughter with me. My daughter was just born and she goes, what a beautiful child. Oh I'm God. like, I'll always like, remember that. Like I'm always going to tell her that story. Yeah. Like she's like a real life Disney princess. Like, yeah. Because like, oh, that's how I feel about her. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. like her costumes. I like that she's always like sparkly and glittery. I think I'm like going through that era now. I just got into Justin Bieber mm -hmm. and like Twilight. So I feel like Taylor Swift's like that same era. Yeah, she is. So I'm like, I think oh, I'm going like, to like get there. Oh my gosh, wait. Mm -hmm. I love that you just. <laughs> you got to feed the audience. <laughs> yeah. Like ASMR perspective mm -hmm. where you're just like. I love <laughs> Enjoy that. Enjoy the fry. <laughs> In the pandemic, like I was bored and I wanted to start a TikTok and I haven't been good about posting lately. I've been filming a lot of stuff, but then I'm so busy with the podcast. I don't have time to ever edit it. Yeah. So I'm just going to be reposting your TikTok from today. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Would you edit your own podcast or you have someone do that? No, I edit it just because the stories are so personal. Oh my gosh. You edit yourself? Yeah. Nobody else would be able to do it. I feel like just because the stories mm. are so personal that I'm the only one who's going to know. And of course, Bridget listens to it and approves it too, but we're the only ones who are going to know what we're really trying to say and mm -hmm. if we're getting the message across and if we're saying it correctly and you know we don't want to offend anybody unless we do as you know right. somebody from our past you know <laughs> and plus, like, mm -hmm, I'm, because i wrote two memoirs you know obviously i'm not an attorney but i went through like the whole legal process with the publishers so i'm pretty well versed in what i can and can't say yeah so i just don't feel like I'd ever find an editor that has that combination of things. And even if they did, I'd be listening to their cut and I'd be like, can you make a change here and make a change here? And, and by the time I've done all these listens, like I might as well just edit it. Wow. That's so. amazing. I don't even know. I wouldn't even know how to like edit. I don't know how to like do the audio and edit all that. Like I have no idea. I did to teach that. myself from scratch. Wow. And there were some fails. Like with the first couple of podcasts we uploaded, the podcast was just really quiet. And then the ads would come on super oh, loud. Yeah, and I all the fans that. are writing in on the Instagram. Like, thank God they gave me the feedback. They're like, um, 
you're, I can barely hear your podcast and your ads are like blaring. So every time there's a critique like that, I have to like go back to square so one. So you read like, the comments too. Like I'm scared to read comments. I'm so, I can't do it anymore. I am in general, but we have an Instagram for the girls next level fan page and like the constructive criticism that you're supposed to hear. It'll find its way to you. Right. Without having to, like, yeah. Well, yeah. I hate haters who straight up say mean shit, and then they're <gasps> mad if you block them, and, like, you can't take constructive criticism. I'm like, that was not constructive yeah, criticism. Yeah, you're just mean when they're just straight up mean. So bad. That's, like, me. Like, anytime someone calls me fat, I block them, and they're like, wow, you can't. They do the same thing to me. Like, you can't take anyone that has a different opinion. I'm like, I'm not going to, like, let you call me fat. Like, it's so I know. Stupid. Plus, it's, like, it's your page. So right. Like, it's, like, up to you what's on there. I, that's what I say. I'm like, I'm going to block anything even remotely negative. Like, if yeah. you're going to say something even kind of negative, block like instantly your eyes are so pretty i just oh. never knew how blue your eyes were thanks oh my god i didn't know i was trying to do my makeup like yours i was trying to do so much today i did a whole get ready with me talking about like no, that's totally like how i would do it i just i just like love everything about you i feel like i know you <laughs> it's so white that's what i love about the fish sandwiches is there's <laughs> It's the one thing at McDonald's that actually looks like real meat. Like, you can see the flakiness of the Yeah, fish. it's, like, actually really fresh. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Have you ever, like, done that kind of stuff? Like, mm, like what do you call it? Like, I don't know, not fetishy, but, like, POV eating, like, feeding. I haven't, but I really should. But, yeah, we're kind of close to each other, actually. When you were up in this area, I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh, so crazy. Yeah, no, I like it up here. It's so peaceful. It's so calm, so quiet. And it's easy to run errands. Like, running errands in L.A. proper, forget it. No. Like, like you never know where there's going to be photographers. Mm -hmm. You never know... N never anywhere to park like the structures are the worst mm -hmm. paying for parking meter parking like anytime i go anywhere in melrose like if i have a hair appointment like literally can't park anywhere like literally always get tickets and it's just awful that's why yeah. i want to move down here and it's like so far i'm so far from like la but mm -hmm. people like love to come out this way or yeah and I it love feels like it. a very safe bubble yeah um, are you mostly in vegas or are you mostly in mm -hmm. you split split but. so you do vegas i love vegas peep show i just feel like they should bring back like a thousand percent would you do it or are you just like over it I feel like I couldn't really keep the schedule because Kids. to keep a show like that going, like you have to be really consistent mm -hmm. about it. Like, obviously I'm not Britney Spears. I can't just pop in when I want and pop out. Right. And I just couldn't like with my kids, I couldn't really keep the schedule. Mm. But Oh, were you? I love doing the show. You were so, it was so good. Fun. It was so <laughs> good. The first two people were Kelly Monaco and Scary Spice. Yeah, I saw you and the and people then there after was you. Me and then um, I saw Angel. Angel was my understudy, and then Coco, and that was the last one. I saw. I definitely saw Angel. I thought she had the dream job when I was like, because I feel like me and her are like the same age, and I just wanted her job so bad. She's just, gonna love this because okay. I shit you not. Like I love your videos so much, especially the singing ones. Yeah. <laughs> and when I see one that really resonates, I send it to Angel, and she loves it too. So really? she's gonna love it. Yeah. I'm no, I'm obsessed. And I told her, I'm like, I'm getting McDonald's with Trisha Paytas today. And she goes, I'm so jealous. No. <laughs> oh my. I love her. Watching you two on that show. We were so obsessed with Girls Next Door. And I was like, I want to rewatch it. So we, we watched it with Moses because he had never seen any of it. And it's so good because it's just like your life. You're like the star. It's not like you have to be like, you know, with a guy, which whatever. I mean, I thought like it was. Oh, they the tried. The, the producers really? wanted like romance on the show so bad. And Wait, I was like, what? Yeah. And I was like, I can't do that. Like. That would have ruined it. The yeah, vibe. Yeah, because then you just... They wanted somebody, like, the second they heard a rumor I was dating somebody, they wanted them on the show that minute. And I'm like, but I don't know this guy yet. Mm -hmm. I did have a boyfriend who was, like, on tour, and he would, like, Skype Call with in, me yeah. on the show, and he was super good sport about it, but first season was rough because they were trying to like drag anybody I was like no. rumored to be with on the show and I was like oh no because not and especially no. after just coming out of the relationship mm -hmm. with Hep I'm like I don't want to be known for like dating somebody now yeah. can we please not do that because that's why it showed you in this like other light you know what I mean mm -hmm. I wanted to be one of you have girlfriends so bad oh my god <laughs> I went to the Playboy Mansion twice and then the second time I met him and mm -hmm. then I feel like I never got asked back again I remember like meeting him and I remember him telling me like Oh, you have like a lot here. It's <laughs> like, oh, oh man, no, so God, like, like nobody in... asked, bro. <laughs> right. But... It was like that for everybody. <sighs> like he, it was so weird. Like, he would go down to the dinner table and there'd be like a playmate down there minding her own business eating. Like, you know, you, you should really start using the gym. You put on a few months, <gasps> but it would be in front of everybody. That's crazy. Like I understand like his mindset is completely different from mine. And like the beauty standard was completely different back yeah, then. And yeah. he probably thinks of it as like, oh, keeping in shape for the photo Of course, shoot. yeah. But to tell that in front of everybody, oh God, God. I was dying. That's like the word. And you guys ate on the show though. Like you guys were always, like there was one where you guys were going through Arby's and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I love that. I love it. So it always seemed like it wasn't like strict until later on that I heard people were like, oh yeah, it was like strict diets and strict this and but yeah. it always seemed like you were, like, eating, enjoying life. And I was like, oh, so good. Yeah, bad. for sure. Like, we always had the fun <laughs> events where we were, like, eating stuff. But, it, but then, like, all the other time we had to, like, 
count our calories and <laughs> stuff wow. like that. At least I did. Yeah, it was very like there were two different sides to it for sure. So you're doing the podcast full time. Yeah, podcast, and I have another season of the Playboy Murders on ID that's gonna come out early next year. We're gonna start filming it in July. And then we wow. have another show coming out after that that's kind of a different topic matter, but that hasn't been not Playboy. Yet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm excited about it. So you produce all these. That's amazing. That's crazy. Cause like I didn't know one, I didn't know like Playboy, like the murders, like how many murders could there be? Like that's what's so yeah, crazy to me. I watched I'm for two seasons. That's, that's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I saw the Jasmine one because I like was so into like her even before that all happened. Did you like, ever meet her? Because when you went up to the pool parties, it was probably around the same time. Yes, right? I met her and I just remember her being so nice and I always remember her like face. So when it came out, I was like, wait, I feel like that's the same girl. And like, it was like literally so sad. All your content. I'm like, damn, how does she do it? Like, yeah. do you have a schedule? Are you like, okay, I have to be up early, hair and makeup, <laughs> baby stuff this that or do you just kind of like go with the flow I kind of go with the flow like thank god I have Moses like I feel like when your kids get older it's probably like easier because they get to go to like school, yeah, school and stuff like that and you have two kids so I'm just like how do you do all this it's like amazing you're like a super mom and you're like going to pick them up you're like doing it hands-on like it's insane <laughs> I don't know how you do it well part way like I have joint custody so mm. you do have that time because I'm divorced so you do have that time when I'm not with the kids mm -hmm. so I can just like try and get everything I need to get done done and right it's different every month though so it's a little tricky because the kids dad's schedule is always different depending on like what events he's doing mm -hmm. and things like that so it's all over the place but I like having a full life too like I can't really complain because every phase in my life no matter how successful or not successful I was like I'm always burning the candle at both ends That's like it's always just trying to fit as much in you're a Sagittarius no Capricorn I'm Capricorn but it's interesting you say that because I'm a Sagittarius midheaven and they say your midheaven sign is how the public perceives you and if you play into your midheaven sign the more successful you'll be in the public realm no way because yeah. you give off Sagittarius vibes that's what I thought good I'm doing it right yeah because <laughs> your but your bio says Scorpio something Scorpio Venus because my Venus oh. is in Scorpio and I just really like relate to that placement. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting because I was like Scorpio. My husband's a Scorpio and I love Scorpios. But then I was like, wait, no, your birthday is like right before Christmas, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm the 23rd. Yeah. Did you like being a Christmas baby? I did. My parents were always good about it. Like my birthday and Christmas were always very mm -hmm. separate. And I was never like a really social kid. Like I'm very like quiet and kind of solitary. So being on school break and not having to have the birthday party where I invite everybody was actually kind of chill for me. Yeah, I right. So you have your thing. <laughs> were you one of those babies in the um that had the Santa hat when you were born? You know the newborns get newborn hats? No. Because they do that I think now. I want a Christmas baby because I want a baby to have my little Santa hat. Oh my God, that would be cute. I almost want to say when I think back, because I obviously I've seen like the pictures in my family albums of myself when I was in the hospital. I don't think they were putting hats on babies. Like that's how fucking old I am. <laughs> Wait, no, really? I swear well, to no, God. They, yeah, but honestly me neither. Actually, when I look back at my baby one, I, they didn't have a hat on me. So now like, like every baby has that pink and blue hat yeah, with the bow. <laughs> every single baby. <laughs> it's kind of cute though. I kind of live for that. I didn't know they did Santa hats. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh my God, type in like Santa newborn. They have them. And so that's why I like really wanted to plan to have like a baby around Christmas time. I was like, I really want a Christmas baby, but I want I a Halloween that. baby. <gasps> that that so would have cool. been so. Do you want more kids? Um, realistically, no. But no. like in my imagination, like oh, it'd be so cute to have like two more. Yeah, I hate it how men have the option of like they can be old fucks. <gasps> yes, and have kids. <laughs> But women can't, and like I kind of think, depending on like how I'm doing, like financially and time wise, and how focused I feel like I can yeah. be. Like in a way, I feel like it would be kind of cool to have another set in my fifties. Mm -hmm. Like I would love that, but it's like not realistic. How old were you on the girls' next You were like you're young, like 25, 26, 27. Oh my god, I thought yeah. we were like literally like the same age. That's so crazy. Oh, thank you. oh my gosh, That's you look flattering. so young. You literally you. look. Oh my god, that, <laughs> what is it? Your skin, like why? Because I was looking at it, I was like, what is your skin secret? I think part of it is growing up like in Alaska in the Pacific Northwest. I did not see the sun when mm. I was a child, and starting from like fifth grade on, I wore sunscreen. I've wore sunscreen like every day of my life. Um, also, I had acne when I was in fifth grade, so my mom took me to a dermatologist, and we got Retin-A. So I've been using Retin-A since like wow. way back when. Yeah, you can't see anything. Thanks. I have so many like acne scars on my face because I had such bad acne. No, I did proactive. I do. So Mine's so bad. Oh my god, I like hide my hair with it. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy. Yeah, you look yeah, so good. So no you. more kids. So I know. I just saw Al Pacino is having a baby at 83 years old with a 29 year old, and so is Robert De Niro. He's yeah. like super old too. He just had uh, a baby at 80. I'm like, what? And I was just talking to Bridget about this. There's so many weird things about this. Like, first of all, like Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Like, if you had asked me, quick, how old are those guys? And I didn't have to think about it. I'd be like 67. Like, how the fuck are they both 80 <laughs> now? So old. Like, I know, I know they're older. They're older than me. But like, how right. the fuck are they 80? I know. Time. It just goes away so fast. That's what yeah. I think too. In my head, I always think, oh my god. 
yeah, they're like so old or so old. Honestly, I thought they were actually older because I feel really? like yeah, I mean, you're a lot younger than me though, so that makes sense. Like the way we perceive them. Yeah, like Johnny Depp to me seems young. Like I always thought he was in his like 30s, 40s, and he's like literally 60 or something like yeah, that that's now. Crazy. I don't get that at all. Oh my god. Oh, okay, I also talk about Madonna in because you turned me on to it. Oh my god, how it, can you go up there? <laughs> I've been there a good handful of times since Girls Next Door. Like, that was the first time we mm -hmm. went for Bridget's sister's birthday. And it was one of my favorite trips because it was one of the few things that the girls and I got to go do alone. And then I've been there several times when I was married. We would do, like, road trips up there. And I went really recently. I went with a girlfriend during the pandemic. Like, they had just opened up. And they weren't even serving food in the restaurant. They, like, had... The tent? Yeah, they mm -hmm. have a tent. You went there? The tent? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I think you went, like, not long after I mm -hmm. did. So I remember yeah. the cake smashing video. Yes. I was like, that's so iconic. I went because of you. I was like, I need to go up there. No, we had so much fun. We got a couple different rooms and just did photo shoots. I love that. Yeah, and we got love... a lot of good stuff. I think that's so cool. <gasps> these are the best. The strawberries are... Have you had it? Have you had it since the strawberry came out? I love these, too. I also love the holiday one they have that kind of looks like sugar cookie sprinkles. <laughs> I feel like it's like... I'm still so nervous. I always thought when I was younger, because I do get so nervous around girls, I was like, maybe, I always thought I was like gay, like full on mm -hmm. gay. I can't have like sex with girls. Like, I mean, I have, but I'm just like not good at it. I don't know what to do. I'm like, it's to me, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But um, but then I'm like, oh, come on. I still love girls. I get nervous around girls. I think girls are like the prettiest. I connect with girls. So I'm like, am I like gay or is it just being friends with girls? <laughs> I don't know what it I is. Know. I feel like it's different for everybody. Like sexuality is such a spectrum and everybody's kind of their own unique little mix I think yeah their own because I never know the difference because I'm like you know what I could I could have easily married a woman I'm just like not good at the sex vaginas just seem like a lot to handle like I can barely handle my own who is your celebrity that you would be like do you get starstruck anymore maybe not oh I'm sure I would be and I know there's a good example but for some reason it is escaping my mind of who I would freak out if I met and it's somebody kind of like weird and offbeat that people will be like who why would you care but yeah. there is an example and for some reason i'm just blanking on who it is right now like someone disney someone mm -hmm. i don't know it'll be like niche people like back in the day i really wanted to meet hunter s thompson because i love fear and loathing in las vegas <laughs> that's so random and i met him when he did a book signing and that was really cool but like that was my example back then of like who the one person i would have picked that i thought oh this person would be so cool to meet you know when i was in my early 20s and like I moved down to LA when I was 19. You know, anytime you see a celebrity when you never mm -hmm. see one, it's so impressive. But then after like moving into the mansion, you're kind of like, you kind of see the other side mm -hmm. and how people are just people. So it's just kind of like, eh. I know for me, for instance, I used to always want to date celebrities. I thought like, oh, I want to marry someone famous. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be my end all be all. And then when you do, you see such like a dark side and then they're also just like kind of, not all of them, but like some of the ones I date, they're just like kind of awful people. Like they just like lead you on, they don't care, like whatever. And I was kind of like, this is like not it. And I used to date famous people all the way in my 20s. And then when I gave, like, people who had just, like, normal jobs, like, civilian jobs a chance, I was just like, oh, this is actually so much better and so mm -hmm. much more. Like, they're just more caring. I feel like maybe one known a writer. <gasps> I would probably I scare her. her if I met her. <laughs> <laughs> really? Are you, like, because you would be, like, fan? Uh, probably. Yeah. She was just such I a staple, her. like, growing up. And she was so pretty. Like, her mm -hmm. face in the Edward Scissorhands promo stills is, like, my favorite face. Mm -hmm. Where he's, like, holding her from behind in the white dress. Yeah. She's so like effortlessly pretty. iconic. Mm -hmm. Like everything she's been in. Winona Ryder still to this day. I just got into Stranger Things and I was kind of like, oh, she's kind of like perfect on this show. Like she, yeah. the last season, I just thought she was just like so perfect in every way. I love her too. So good. Yeah, I would be, I feel like she'd be a good one to me. Yeah, there's no like men that I like love. I just love like, like, did you ever meet Anna Nicole? I did. Yeah. How was she? Really sweet. I, I, I wish I had more stories about her, but I just kind of met her in passing. She was at a party and she was just one. She was super tall, like way taller than I thought she was going to be. And she was just really sweet, really polite, mm. like Southern girl. She's my, she was my favorite. I just look at girls like you, like her, like Pam. And I'm just like, oh, those are like, you're like, Mar it's like Marilyn, you know, you look at her and you're just like, that's like almost unattainable, you know, like as a person. She's always kind of presented as like the first playmate, but. She posed for this nude calendar shot because she was desperate for money because her car got repossessed when she was trying to make it in Hollywood. And the photographer was like, nobody will ever recognize you. Don't worry about it. Because, like, her face is kind of hidden. Her hair was kind of dark or whatever. But then when she finally is, like, starring in movies and the movies are coming out, finally this calendar, people start talking about it. And they're like, this is this girl. 
And it could have ruined her career. Like, you don't really know. But, like, Playboy bought the pictures and they printed the first magazine with those pictures. But not asking her, not paying her anything. Mm. She had to go, like, buy a copy of the magazine herself to even see what was in wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Did he ever know her? Did half know her? No. So they always just kind of present it as, like, she was the first, but, like, she had no connection yeah, directly. No, no. I don't know. It just pisses me off when guys, like, just in general, when guys, like, take take advantage. And obviously yeah. her career, like, continued to take off. But nobody knew that. Like, back then your career could have been ruined by yeah. those photos coming out. Do you ever get... <laughs> Last bite. <laughs> it's so good. The strawberries is, like, really so is. amazing. Do you ever get bored talking about Playboys? <laughs> Not really. It depends on the context. It completely depends. Like... We used to do interviews all the time where I would hate to be asked certain things, but when you're talking about it on your own platform, it's completely different. Yeah. I did an interview with Brett Michaels and he like, his manager was just like, don't ask him too many questions about Rock of Love. And that was like all my questions. Oh, I no. was like, I had so many questions and he was like nice. He answered about uh -huh. some of them, but I just was get so fascinated. I feel like oh, you're like on my wall at my house. <laughs> and I have your Playboy thing. <laughs> I think I saw, I think I saw that you made a video. Oh my God. So Moses like, maybe she wants to come over and see. Next like, time. Yeah. If you ever want to. My One little... thing about Playboy photos is they're really good. They look really great as collages. Yeah. Like that's back when I did the guest house at the mansion, I had like a Pamela Anderson room and a Marilyn Monroe room. And I took like all their Playboy covers and like decoupage the dressers and the mirror frames. Oh, you know how stuff. to do that? Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do it's on my really dressers. Easy. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you take? You take like like what kind of glue? What deco podge? Mod Podge. You can get it at a craft store. It's like this jar. It basically is like Elmer's glue, but it comes in a big jar and you get um a paintbrush and then I think I just tore out the magazine photos and then when I wanted to use images of the cover, I printed them out on regular paper because you don't want to use stuff that's too thick right. necessarily. And then just cut them out and layer them over each other. And first you put like a layer of the glue down and then you put the pictures down and then you let that dry. And then you put a layer of glue or a couple of layers on top and it just dries clear like a shellac. Oh my gosh. Where are those pieces at? I think they got sold off in like the Playboy auction, some of them. Because Bridget and I are doing this live podcast yeah. where we're going through the auction books <gasps> and like talking about the stuff because it just brings back memories. Oh my god, where did you and find where did you find the auction stuff? You can buy the auction books like on eBay, people. Really? Sell them. Oh and because we didn't pay attention back when the auction was happening. And right. you look in there and you're kind of surprised at what they're selling. And I found like, they were selling one of the Pam Anderson mirror frames that I made. Someone was selling their guitar from the Cribs episode. Oh, and it was, was like it super expensive. Yeah, it was like a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it wasn't Sotheby's either. I actually know the person, and she was like selling it like low key. But like I was like, I can't buy that's it for a hundred thousand. That's a lot 000. of money. I had yeah. one of those guitars, but I gave it to another playmate because she was married to a country singer, and it like fit the vibe of her house and wow. stuff. Yeah. Oh, those those guitars are iconic. Well, the Cribs mm -hmm. episode was iconic, so that's why I was, like, I was thinking. About it. <laughs> I think it's so cool. I, I still have the outfit I wore, like the jeans <gasps> and the thing. The bra, <laughs> yeah. that one, because that one you looked so young. You must have been like what twenty or something for that because that was before Girls Next Door. Yeah, I was probably like twenty three or twenty four. Because you looked like a baby. You looked so young on That's that one. Crazy. I have so many more questions to ask because I was just like with Ryan Ostendi. I was going to ask about your princess. Like, oh yeah, looks. I love his. I love his photos, and he started doing this princess series. I saw it in a book that they used to sell at Disneyland called like The Art of the Disney Princess, and he did like a Snow White and a Pocahontas. And I called him up. I'm like, can I be Belle? I swear, I have brown oh, eyes. Oh, really? And work. And it's like, yeah, we'll do Belle. So we did Belle, we did Tinkerbell, and we did Elsa. Tinkerbell, um, my friend Ari did your makeup and hair, your blend. No, I love her. She's my favorite makeup. Like, I always do my own makeup, but, like, if I ever get around to trying to call somebody, I'd call her. <laughs> I know. So she was out of town today. I was, like, dying. I was like, can you, like, do my, like, Tinkerbell makeup? Because that's, like, one of my favorite. And the Vegas Diaries cover, too. I think she did. And I mm -hmm. loved your makeup on that. That was, yeah, like, so, it was so pretty. Good. So when I know mutual friends, I always ask them about you. Good so, and I was happy that we could match today. <laughs> Me, too. Our figments. <laughs> Sweaters. So cute. One day we'll have to do like Disneyland or something like I know, that. Totally. Because you're always there. Mm -hmm. Club 33. I'm still like yeah. trying to figure out how people, how did you get into it? Like, in the well, moment. they have a <laughs> waiting list for people to join. And um, my husband or my ex husband at the time and I joined back in 2012. And around that time, they were remodeling Club 33 and expanding it. So they opened up the guest list a little bit more and they were adding more people from the wait list than they ordinarily would. So I just got really lucky that we happened wow. to be on the wait list that year. Wow. And my friend Ashley joined that year too. So we just got really lucky right you to know, join. And that was after right Playboy. Right yeah. 
Mm -hmm. wow. and I, had my, I had my baby shower at Club 33 for Rainbow. That's so cute. And your wedding. Oh my God, your wedding at Disney is so pretty. It was an amazing wedding. We had like New Orleans Square for our reception. We got married inside Pirates of the Caribbean. We had our own Phantasmic show. Oh. It was really cool. I could cry thinking about that. That yeah. sounds like a dream. It was awesome. Have you stayed in um, Sleeping Beauty's castle? Or Cinderella's castle? In um, Florida. Disney World. No, that's one thing I want to do, but they don't like let you rent it out. You, you have to like, win a contest or something. Oh. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how I can. Oh my God. I hope you get on there. But that's definitely on my Disney bucket list. I feel like Disney probably thinks I'm not on brand though because I was in Playboy. But you weren't Dancing with the Stars. That was like ABC, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, anyways, all right. Well, thank you so much for letting me film this. And like, I am so excited. I love you so much. Aww. This was so much fun. So, so good. Yay. All right. Thanks, guys, Bye, guys, for watching. See you on TikTok. <laughs>